No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and we're burning the midnight oil. We in here late, tapping in with Lil Reese. For so. Sure. As well as returning guest, the one and only Tay Savage. You know that. No, you be with Reese and them. <laughs> what you guys up to? What are you doing rolling around L.A.? We just cool. I had to do um, a little photo shoot for a little clothing brand, RTA. So I came out to do that. And I had to take care of some That's so about it. How come you guys are always moving around together? What's, it, what's the relationship here? That's my boy. That's my boy, though, for sure. But I, I hear he's kind of crazy. Crazy, you met me too many times. You know I ain't crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's two different versions of Tay Savage. There's the peaceful Tay Savage, and then there's the the music Tay Savage. Oh, That's a little push different. Push peace Tay Savage. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Push but, peace. The push and peace Tay Savage does not necessarily align with the music Tay Savage, right? Yeah. yeah, that's two different people. Yeah, that is. Which one do you know? I know both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh huh. I know both of them, man. Gotcha. Um. All right. So let's let's just uh, get into it. Let's 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 start from the beginning in terms of the the Lil Reese story. Come on, let's do it. Um. All right. So tell us a little bit about where you were born and uh, your upbringing. I'm from Chicago. I'm really from like the Kaimet building. It's a project that was up across the street from Old Block. I'm sure they already know that though. I said this like a hundred times. <laughs> oh, boy. I went to Walter Reed. Got kicked out of Walter Reed to kindergarten. Then I went to Parkman on 51st in Princeton. After I went to Parkman, I went to a school in Sircon. Then I don't remember no more after that. I went to high school, CVS, Lincoln Park, shit like that. What was your high school experience like? You you were a good kid? It was good for a minute, then it started getting bad. I ain't gonna lie. What was getting bad? Like everything, like... You couldn't even get on the bus no more and go to school. So I had to buy a car. I bought a car my freshman year. What kind of car? It was a little ass car. I paid like $2,000 for it. Yeah, yeah. This is before you took DJU's bike? No, I took his bike um, before that, though. So that's a real story? Yeah, that's a real story. His dad used to work in the Kite Man building. But the one that you brought on the show was fake? No, that was a real bike. That, that was, was the bike. bike. I found that <laughs> Just I kept went, it? I went in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> I went in the garage and pulled that out. Okay, so what, what was what really started happening once uh they kind of once you like started getting a little bit older and stuff that made it so crazy? I don't know. I mean, the real got to getting crazy. I mean, people got to dying that mm -hmm. you was close with, so it's like a lot of got to change. For sure. Who was the first person you lost that uh kind of shook you? My homie Lomo. My homie named Lomo. Hell yeah. Right. That's the first thing I lost. And what was uh what what was that like for you as a kid? That was crazy. I was like 15. I think he was like 16. So I don't know, that was crazy as hell. Definitely. Lil Mo from like the Calumet building or where are you from? No, Lil Mo, Lil Mo was from he was from Sircon and then he had came over to and then he was with us. For sure. So who was the crew at that time when you were in high school? Or was it like anybody that we're familiar with now? Um, I mean, yeah, hell yeah, basically, yeah. Like I used to be around back then, like that. I used to be around Sosa, but then you know G Money. Yeah. From um, No Limit, he used to be with me, and then it used to be Fredo. I used to be around No Limit, Mansky, all them same people though. What were you guys listening to at that time? Us, our music, the music we was making. Okay. Hell yeah. So who was the first one to actually start making music? Damn, that's a good question. I, I feel like everybody would start doing it around the same time, like when it started getting popping. And, and we started seeing like that what was going on. We started doing it all at the same time. Right. Who? Uh, so who were you guys listening to that like motivated you, though, that, that got you excited about music in the first place? Each other? I really was listening to each other. I was listening to them. I wasn't really, we weren't really like listening to rappers. Like growing up, like, because the rappers that was growing up, they weren't like our age, so it was like we weren't really listen to them. Right, but you guys didn't, weren't you guys Dipset fans? I mean, because that's where Fredo Santana comes yeah, from. Fredo, is Joel Santana, Fredo was a little right? older though, so oh, yeah, yeah. that's why he was like into Dipset and all them type. But we knew what they was like. We used to always hear their music, like Joel Santana and 
J.R. Ryder and all them, and Cameron and all them. We'll hear they shit, but it's like, I don't know, but Fredo was like really a fan of them. Like That's why he named his name after like Fredo Santana. Right. He named it after, after Joel Santana. So Fredo used to really be on that time. He used to be wearing bandanas. He was different though. I ain't gonna lie. He was always different. Right. Definitely. Um, okay, so what, were you guys hanging out at O-Block at that time? Was that yeah, like hell, yeah. where you were at like every day like on a, on average? Sometimes we'd be out there because that's where we grew up in. So it was like we always came back with our people. Right, definitely. So, okay, when when did you start realizing that like you guys were gaining hype like just on a local level, like before it popped off on YouTube and everything like that? Like when we got the when we made a song called like Rob Kill, and then Sosa made a song, and I don't know it's just like we was looking at the views and we was doing like a hundred thousand views in a day, shit like that, and we ain't never did that type of shit, so that made us like think like just keep going, keep going. That's what we was doing, putting out more music and more music until that shit came it came from our hood and introduced us to somebody like. Over over the labels, like the president of the labels, like that. And we took it from there. Came out to Cali, and they ain't never leave. So of them still living on. Cause you signed your deal before Jiki. Yeah, right? I came out here and signed my before him. Hell yeah. So how was that like? So uh, the labels just reached out to you because they seen what the impact y'all was having already. The la- one one of the president of the labels was from Chicago, so it's like he was watching Chicago, the shit that was going on in Chicago. And the person who introduced us to him was from Chicago, so it was like it was really was a Chicago thing. Though I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, really it was like, just hype yeah. from like a lot of people kind of going on at the same time. Yeah, it was like some Chicago, like you know, if it's like ah, you and me, somebody from Chicago that's in a position, and then somebody from around your way know the person who in the position. He just introduced us to him. That's how it took off from now. And it was Def Jam, right? That's yeah, Def Jam. Signed. Hell yeah. Did Dirk sign a Def Jam too, or was it just you? No, me and Dirk signed. Oh, so we signed a no ID. Oh yeah. Yeah, no ID at the time. Definitely. Is it true, like, because there's this, like, picture of you that claims that you're throwing up BD and you're three years old. Is that real, or is that just you making a random hand sim- signal as a kid? Oh, that's real. That's real. What, what, you, what, you just had, like, family members that thought it was funny to get a three-year-old to do that? I don't know that, why or? they made me do that. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know why they made me do that. It was some people I was around. I was just around some older guys. They made me throw up BD. I ain't gonna lie. I was young as hell, like, three years old, throwing up BD. Do you approve of that? Or do you think that that's a little out of line to be having a three-year-old doing that? I don't know, because I ain't going to let my son do nothing like that, though, you know? So, I really and don't. And then it's kind of normal, though. Especially yeah, though. y'all growing up in the BD project. Yeah, and I was, so was like, kind of like. Yeah, I don't. They looked at me like I was their son, so. They ass used to make me shoot dice, all type of shit. <laughs> For real. When's the first time they hit the blunt? <laughs> like 10. I don't smoke now, so it's like, I don't even matter. I was like 10 years old when I first started smoking. Do you think that's. Is that acceptable or is that a little? Nah, my mom and them didn't know though. Like I was sneaking and doing that shit, like running through the projects and shit, getting help with my little with my little crew, crew of guys who I was around. So how did you even originally meet uh, Cheeky? If anyway, like what y'all, where y'all build your relationship at? Outside, like like running around as badass kids and shit. Like my my family know his family type shit, so it's like I always used to see him and shit. Like what age is this? You think? Like ten. Yeah. And Dirk around too at this time, Fredo. Let me see. Fredo was yeah. Fredo was from 61st in Indiana. Dirk had came from like, like from like by Dog Pound, which was like down the street from us. Yo, yeah. I need everybody to check out NoJumber.com. We officially started a blog. It has in-depth articles about current events, music, etc. Plus all of our content in terms of podcasts, interviews, etc. And you can get some exclusive new merch if you check out NoJumber.com. So make sure you tap in.